Art the Clown is back, just in time for the holidays, and he's bringing with him a whole bunch more of unbridled, disgusting, violent acts. Tis the season. I already reviewed Terrifier 3. I thought it was pretty fun. I thought it was disgusting. I thought it was everything I kind of looked for in the movie. Minus some of the scary aspects I thought the other two movies delivered better on. That tension was missing in this third one. But what it lacked in the tension, it made up for in the laughs. Made up for in the smiles. And that's really the best gift you can receive on Christmas. Let's talk about Terrifier 3 in a spoiler video. I have different approaches to my spoiler videos. Sometimes I'll kind of play by play, go through the film, talk about the pros and cons. And sometimes I just like to get down to business, talk about the highlights and the lowlights. And I think that's what I'm gonna do here. Just whatever jumps to my brain first, I'm gonna talk about. So again, if you haven't seen T3, I'm calling Terrifier 3 T3 for that one time only and never again. Maybe don't watch this video until you watch it. But Or if you don't care and you're fine, yeah, then yeah, let's all aboard. Please think about subscribing too. It just takes a second. It's f Sheila, yep, she's saying it's free still to subscribe to a channel. That way I show up more in your feed. And if you hit the notification bell somewhere on the screen, then I definitely show up on your feed. And that's what you want to do. All right, let's talk about Terrifier 3. When we last saw our friend Art, he had lost his head. Quite literally, it was decapitated. Final Girl Sienna? took a final cut to that poor bastard's neck. But don't worry, like a beautiful newborn baby, he was delivered by his best friend, Victoria, I think is her name, Vicky. The chick that got her face mauled in the first movie and she just can't die ever since. She's become an art sycophant. She's really all on board with the art stuff, loves what he's selling. And she's even gonna get in full clown attire by the time this movie winds down. I do wanna talk about the bad first note this movie starts on, which is our intro family that gets killed. The boy, the parents, Art is there, he's eating cookies, he's setting the table for what's to come. And listen, I don't wanna turn up my nose at the cinematography on this movie because it is much improved from previous ones, but the opening stuff was not the best foot forward. I thought some of the camera angles looking up the stairs, it just came off as amateurish still. And the movie that's definitely upped the ante in terms of the gore and what it's able to showcase, it felt like the B team was working on that beginning scene. Like they threw it in late in the game and they're like just rushing to get it out because you have to have that initial kill. I don't know what happened here. Just wasn't huge on it. But I did appreciate him dipping the cookies in the milk. <laughs> with the blood and crap, it was, it was nice, it was nice. And art is much funnier in this film. I have mentioned this in my regular review, for better and for worse. I liked him when he was terrifying in a fun way. He's like that creepy dude that thinks he's telling jokes, but no one's laughing, but they might smile in his direction because, oh yeah, he's, uh, he's gonna kill me if I don't go play along with this. That's how he kind of came off to me in the past. Here, I thought he was just damn funny. He's making silly faces, he's got the, the horn, he's hogging. <laughs> Art really honed his craft in between films. Anyway, he makes short work of that family. There's then a flashback at one point earlier on in the movie where we get a couple of security guards going through this condemned building that was in the first film, Terrifier. And that's where Art has been. He's been hanging out upstairs, he's full of cobwebs, rocking in a chair, and Victoria is dead in a bathtub. She let herself bleed out because she saw herself in the mirror and is like, man, you know what? I'm starting to think these scars aren't gonna heal. So she killed herself, filling this tub with all of her gross remains, blood, piss, shit, it's all nasty. It's, it's terrifier, of course. These guys go up the stairs, they look around, and again, any other movie that was even halfway serious, I would be pulling my hair out at this shit, yelling at the screen. But because these movies are so out there and stupid and intentionally over the top, it's hard to be mad at the kid. You know, now that I think about it, these guys might not have been cops. I have the memory of a goldfish these days. Maybe they were just a, a cleanup crew. Who cares? The dude takes out a phone to take a photo and he gets, he doesn't know how to zoom in. So he's like, oh, I better walk all the way up to this nasty, smelly, gross thing that's in the tub. Get right up in its grill. And of course, she's not dead. Takes him out quick. And the same thing happens with Art in the other room. That guy goes in for a closer gander and <laughs> Art takes him down. But he's gonna make him suffer first. Put his hand into a nail. He's breaking bones. 
And it's at this point we get our first really big what the fuck moment. Vic comes over. I really hope her name is Vic. You know what? I'm going to call her the Corpse's Bride from now on. Corpse's Bride comes over, sees this guy on the ground, sees what Art's doing, and she can't help but, like most of us, get turned on by the situation. Unfortunately, she doesn't have a pleasurable instrument on her. Oh, yeah, she does. She has a piece of glass. She can use that. Just lift up the dress and... Whoa! Toasty! Starts going to town on herself. They're cutting back and forth between the blood to her, who's also leaking blood, of course, because of the, the glass and, you know, what she's doing. And it's a sight to be seen, for sure. And unfortunately, now it's the only way I can achieve climax. After a very hot and steamy scene, we are introduced to Sienna again. She's seeing her niece and hanging out with the uncle and aunt for the weekend. Or how, I don't know how long she's staying there. It doesn't matter. She's there for the holidays. This little girl looks like a 10-year-old version of Jenna Ortega. I, I'm sorry, the eyes, the haircut, everything about her reminded me of just like a baby version of this actress. Maybe it's just me, just an observation. She's been in and out of different health centers trying to get back on her feet. It's been five years, I think they said at one point, since she donned that amazing outfit with a sword and killed that demon clown. That's going to be hard to get over. I mean, I think I would have moved on in a couple weeks, maybe a month at the most, but she's going to take her time. And she is unfortunately seeing some dead friends. One of the girls that she knew that died in the last movie is there. She's got blood all over. She's yelling, making a complete mess of the dinner that the aunt and uncle had set up. It was pretty rude of her. Uh, I found this unnecessary and didn't really add much to the story because Sienna never really has many more of these visions. And obviously, yeah, she's kind of losing her mind a bit, but it never really changes the story at all. This is stuff I think they could have cut out. And, you know, we would know that she's mentally disturbed without having to have these kind of unnecessarily long sections of film. Speaking of children, there's Jonathan. He's off in college, ready to start anew. There's a stupidly attractive blonde chick there. She's walking around wanting to do a podcast on him. He's like, no, I don't want to do a podcast. I just want to live my life like a normal kid. And she's like, okay, but I think you're cool. This is his entire storyline, and it's weird. I don't know why he's honestly even in this film, because they have nothing for this guy to do. I don't know if this was the actor's choice, or if there was just a lot on the cutting room floor that didn't make it to the final film, but he's just not really doing much of anything. He's th he throws a temper tantrum at one point in his room. He's like, I don't like it. I don't want it. And he, po <laughs> There's this is where the low budget stuff still kind of comes into play. There's seriously this rickety shit desk that has like three items on it. And he's like, eh, and he pulls it to the ground. And he's throwing a fit. And he hops in bed. He's like kicking his feet. I don't like the terrifier. I don't like Art the Clown. And I think that is the last time we see him until the ending, which I will get to, of course. Anyway, Art is doing his thing. He's back in the game and he's walking around town with his big black sack of goodies. He tested out a new invention at his workshop, which is a tank filled with liquid nitrogen Art can use to freeze off limbs and break them instantaneously. This should be fun. And it is. He heads over to a local bar where he finds a Santa Claus that catches his fancy. You know, this is a friendly group of guys, just taking the edge off, having some drinks, and in comes Art the Clown, makes a mess of things pretty fast. In fact, at one point he sits on Santa's lap, pisses all over the guy. And in one of the least creative moments of the film, Art says fuck it, takes out a gun, and just starts shooting dudes. Unfortunately, Chris Kringle's not going to get off that easy. Art ties him to a chair and starts freezing different parts of his body, taking out his hammer and <laughs> breaking him off. Oh, that foot looks pretty. <laughs> he takes this guy's real hair to use as a beard. It's very tastefully done. And now we have Santa the Clown. But why? Why Christmas? Why any of this? Well, the movie's not going to answer that. It doesn't seem to care much. Art, I guess, just thinks Santa's cool or fun or something. He just likes to fuck around. If you're thinking about it, then you've already lost the plot. He makes his big Santa debut by heading to the mall and greeting the kids. It's at this point I once again have to remind myself, Adam, you're watching a Terrifier movie. Don't be annoyed that these kids are not one bit creeped out by Santa now having a clown face a demonic scary one with sharp teeth. They're still gonna run right up to him, sit on his lap, accept his presence. I wonder what's inside. It's absolute carnage. 
Kid opens his gift and a bomb goes off, decimating all the children and parents in the vicinity. Terrifier 3. Come for the Christmas spirit, stay for the kid killing. I saw a couple comments in my review talking about how that was a bridge too far. You know, watching someone get every part of their body chainsawed off. Watching a woman get ripped from bottom to top in half in the first film. Watching a woman in the second movie get her arm broke and her head scalped. That was all fine. But a bomb that blows up the innocent youth of today? No sir, this film is disgusting! I don't know if you're aware of this, but movies typically up the ante every time. So if you were already a little bit off the tracks before, yeah, you probably don't want to get back on for Terrifier 4. They're just going to keep ratcheting it up more and more. You can label the people that enjoy this stuff as depraved, sick, messed up in the head. And that's fair. I, I think that's fair. I'm on board. All right. I think it's fun. Just like I think it's fun to play Grand Theft Auto, drive around, kill a hooker, rob a bank, blow stuff up. Like, it's not the same thing as doing it in real life. I know some entities would have you believe that, oh, this person played violent video games, that means they're a serial killer. No, I don't think so. It's just another outlet for people to escape their probably miserable existence and head into somewhere wild and out there. You're watching things that you would never do or see in real life, and you're like trying to wrap your head around how insane this all is. And I will say, as another aside, the makeup, the visual effects in this film are top notch. These movies don't have Joker 2 budgets, but they are doing so much more with what they have. Everything looks impressively real, and so that adds another layer when you're watching a guy in a shower get a chainsaw up the ass and rip to the back of his head. You feel it, and don't worry. They're not gonna shy away from flipping that guy over, showing you the sack and all, and ripping right up the other way. We can talk about that scene, I suppose. Art heads on over to the college to find Jonathan at one point, and uh, the podcast chick and her boyfriend are in the showers at the college. Now, I haven't been to a college in quite a long time. When I was at one, they didn't look like these. Are there seriously showers out there that have see-through glass as doors? I grew up at the wrong time. Well, this one does, and Art is attending school for the day. After taking a leak and oddly washing his hands, which I was impressed with, you know he masked up during COVID. He heads on over to the lovebirds who are making passionate love in the shower facility, which is borderline impossible if you ask me. Arch rudely crashes the party by busting a chainsaw through the door and cutting right into the podcast girl, cuts her in half. The guy tries to get away as he's dismembered and, well, the rest is, as they say, history. I already spilled the beans a little bit earlier. All right, if I could just fast forward to the end of the movie. Beep. <laughs> Okay, Sienna swore she saw Art trolling the mall earlier and she's been having these kind of like visions, premonitions, whatever you want to call them, that he's back in the game. And so she needed to retrieve her sword. And she did. Pretty much off camera, which I thought was odd. She went back to the Terrifier to get the sword. None of that's shown. They just, <laughs> I don't know. Apparently it was just sitting out like Excalibur in a rock and she just pulled it and walked away. Told you I'd be all over the place. She also had a flashback where we get to see her dad drawing her as a warrior and eh, I didn't care about any of that. But anyway, we're at the, the final moments. Art and Corpse's bride are there and they come bearing gifts. Aunt and uncle are tied up and Sienna tries to fight off Art but is unsuccessful. She also gets put in a chair. And this is where shit really goes down. The uncle gets killed, it's violent, but it's at least quicker than what's gonna happen to the aunt. This is a brutal scene in the movie, arguably the most brutal. They've been showing rats throughout this movie to a point where I even noticed and was going, what's with the rats? Is this a foreshadow? It was a foreshadow because they brought the rats with. They take a tube, whoosh, they jam it into the aunt's mouth, whip up the mallet, whoosh, 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 right in her grill, and then they put a rat inside. And oh, if it tries to escape, it can't because we got a blowtorch. Torches the rat into her mouth and down her throat where it's wiggling around. Thankfully, don't kill everyone in this scene. They do cut her throat, letting the rats spill out and scamper away once more. 
I appreciate that Arch isn't an animal killer. I respect that. Thank you, sir. Let me pump the brakes for a second. Before he killed the aunt, he showcased the present that he brought. Pulls up the top to a gross skull of what is supposedly her little daughter. So the last thing she sees right before she dies is what's left of the face of her own child. Hmm. Happy holidays. Sienna's turn. Art wastes no time taking mallets to her hands. He is kicking the shit out of her, whacking her over the back of the head, breaking bones in her body that should probably have already killed her, but she's gonna toughen through it. Now that the aunt is dead, Art can get rid of that cruel prank and reveal that that was not her child after all. They bring poor little Gabby into the room and he tells Sienna who really this skull belongs to as he places some nerdy glasses on top. It's John Boy himself. Jonathan has been killed off camera, unceremoniously. Sienna freaks the fuck out, naturally. Now pretty much everyone she loves is dead. I have to believe this is a bait and switch. I don't think that's Jonathan's skull either. But they do not reveal who it is, and I'm pretty sure they're making a Terrifier 4, so we'll find out. We will find out that answer. If it is Jonathan, that's kind of a pretty lame way to kill the character off, but well, what, whatever, it's fine. Gabby, thinking quick, asks Art if Sienna can open her gift at least before she dies. Art, being the gentleman and the scholar that he is, inclines. That's when Sienna takes her mangled, busted up hands, grabs her power sword, and starts going to town. She kills the corpse's bride, who turns into some acid blood like she's a freaking xenomorph, melts the floor away, opening up that gateway to hell. Gabby starts to fall, but Sienna grabs her sword, springs into action, reaches down, and Gabby hangs onto the handle. That means Sienna is hanging on with her bare hands to the blade. It's cutting them up. I don't know how this woman is even managing to hold on as long as she did. Gabby, unfortunately, is gonna fall to her presumed death, but probably not. She'll probably come back as another version of that psycho art girl clown. Wait, did she fall in? Maybe she didn't. <laughs> Again, I have the, the memory of a goldfish. I can't remember if she fell in or not. <laughs> anyway, Arch is still very much a presence. So they're going to battle for a while. Sienna is going to get the best of him. And he's going to end up going out the window to fight another day. And the movie is going to end with uh, Sienna and maybe the, the girl. Shit, I should probably look this up. If you've seen it, you know. If you haven't, you don't know. <laughs> the film ends with Art on a bus, presumably heading out of town. He's gonna give Sienna a little bit of a break. He's done enough damage to this town for a while. He's gonna maybe reset his batteries, get back into full fighting shape, and he'll return when he's good and ready. Uh, that's not gonna stop him from taking one more victim on a bus, and he... He honks his horn to say goodbye. It's a very, it's a very nice way to end the film for Christmas. And there you have it, Terrifier 3, to the best of my ability to recollect what happened. I'm sure I missed some big moments, some crazy kills. Hopefully I, I touched upon most of them though. And uh, I would love to hear from you. What was your favorite part of the film? Did you like it even? Are you planning on seeing it or not? Not your cup of tea? Completely understand why it wouldn't be. Appreciate if you would like the video and subscribe to the channel. I post movie reviews every single week. I touch on pretty much all the big stuff that comes out. I hit up things that are on streaming services that no one would dare watch except for me and I'll give you a review on it because that's that's the kind of goodness I bring to the table. If you love what I'm doing in my one-man operation, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a bunch of different tiers and there's a bunch of exclusives every month that come along with that subscription. I would absolutely appreciate anything you could do. I mean, after all, it is almost Christmas, right? All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.